Ted. Bill. I feel like this is deja vu. A couple <laughs> months ago, we were at the stock and you had just paddled and come back from a trip with your new Key Wade in 15. I, I was, I was. And then I went on another trip with another canoe and my Key Wade in 15. So folks, yesterday was new boat day for Ted. We christened his beautiful new cruiser 14.8 on a, a trip down the Oxtung River. And, and Ted, if, I wanna put our tourism hats on for a minute. You're from Maryland, you're from the East Coast in the US. Tell the folks what Algonquin Park is like. Like, what is this area all about? It is, uh, it's amazing. It's, uh, it, it's an area that you can uh, find other paddlers on certain lakes and there's other lakes where you can go and be completely in the wilderness and go on uh, multi-day trips and not see another person. So it's uh, whatever you want it to be. Um, and yesterday, we did a super cool day trip, a group of three of us, we came down the Oxtongue River, we did four portages, we did about 25 kilometers. What was that trip like? That was fantastic because it was a mix of, uh, of flat water, there was a little bit of mild white water thrown in, and uh, so I had an opportunity to see how this boat would handle in some moving water. And uh, it, was, it was tough keeping up with you, Bill. <laughs> well, it was fun. We had a good group of people, and that was, was awesome. It was great. It was great. Nice. Now, a lot of people will buy a boat from our dealers, but you don't have a dealer in your area. Right. Can you talk a little bit about to the, the folks, like, what is the experience like for someone living in Maryland, wanting a Swift boat and contacting our company, and you've done it and ordered them and come up? What has it been like for you dealing with Swift? It's been great um, because I've asked for some customization that is uh, not right off the website. Um, there's uh, just a great opportunity to learn about all the boats, spending a lot of time on YouTube, checking them out, um, reading comments on YouTube, uh, reading comments on Facebook of other people's experiences and uh, being able to place an order online, then speak with, uh, in my case, Brandon, and it was uh, be able to work through what some of the options are. Am I buying the right boat? Um, and uh, being able to uh, have constant contact and uh, knowing that it's gonna be, gonna be ready when I'm ready to come up and get it. Nice. And you've, now that you've taken delivery of two boats, the pretty cool boats you're getting. They are. They're fantastic. They uh, they've got some differences, and uh, but uh, that's that's what I need. Um, you know, just uh, this is a, this is a pack boat. My other one is uh, has, is a canoe, and uh, got the, got the canoe seat in it. And um, it's uh, it's nice to have both. I'm not sure which is my favorite yet. So Ted ordered a Kiwaden 15 Carbon and Negra Tech Stream with an indigo bottom, and we have some videos on our, our YouTube channel of those beautiful boats. You did a trip in the Adirondacks with your son, and he had a boat from another company, and just tell the folks why you decided to get a second Swift boat. We, uh, we had a great three-day trip, um, did, some, did some great fishing, some exploring. Uh, my son's 13. And uh, so the other boat that, that uh, I had that he was paddling was, uh, was a pack boat. And uh, the features on the build quality and features on the Swift, we had it side by side, the comparison. And things like, I don't have my fishing rod on here right now, but being able to just, just keep the fishing rod on the, uh, on right, right at, the, uh, at the thwart, um, things like that, the build quality, the stability, um, my son got in my Key Waden, and uh, we, so we swapped out. I got in the other pack boat, and uh, it became very clear. We were sitting in camp uh, talking about the, the comparison of the two boats and realizing that this is something, canoe tripping is something that we'd like to do for years, and uh, realized that uh, the, the features and the build quality of the Swift boat was um, something we just had to have so that we had uh, two of them. We can, uh, we can interchange them. So if I want to be in a pack boat and he wants to, he wants to paddle the canoe with the canoe seat, we can, and vice versa. So it's uh, great. We, uh, on a separate trip, we spent a lot of time 
trying to decide what color and uh, what, what build. And so that was uh, also a, a great father-son bonding experience over picking out our next swift boat. So you got your son Enzo to pick out the color. Yep. Is it, it was... going to be his boat? Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Before <laughs> before yesterday, I was thinking, well, it's the day it could be dedicated to him. After paddling it on the Oxtongue River yesterday, um, we we might uh, have a communal boats. So it, whoever whoever wants to paddle the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the pack boat can paddle this. Then the other one will be, will have the Kuwaitin. So. so you can. So Dad wants to paddle this boat some more. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Nice. <laughs> okay, and let's tell the folks you've named it. I have named it. I don't name canoes. I don't name uh, vehicles. But uh, yesterday, in looking at this, uh, just a name popped in my head, and I've turned the corner, and I've named it Tangerine Dream. And we're going to show you folks the full bottom in a bit, and you're going to see how cool it really looks. Yeah. Awesome. Now, Ted, I've, this is the setup. I'm a traditionalist. I don't have much in front of me. So let's just tell the folks, you ordered the universal mount package and how you like to use it here. I love it because I mount my phone on it and um, this is with a, with a phone mount that's very reliable that I also use on my motorcycles. I ride, I ride motorcycles. So I have my, my phone mount on it. I can easily get it off to get those shots of moose if I need to. Um, I can keep it on and, and take photos or video as I'm paddling. I can uh, check my email if necessary or text. Um, I can look at, look at my GPS on it. I also have another ball mount here that I like to keep my water on. What's, what I didn't bring this time is uh, a, a fishing rod mount, which goes right here. I, can, I paddle with a fishing mount uh, with my, my fishing rod on the, on the boat. It's out of the way. Um, I also portage with the fishing mount and the fishing rod on the boat. Uh, so it stays, stays perfectly uh, safe and out of the way. It doesn't cause a problem. Um, so I like to have everything right close. I have a thwart bag that I, that I use also to have my snacks and other things in there. So I like to have everything right here. And uh, it works really well for me. And this is one of the other reasons that we decided to get a swift boat is, to be, is because of this, this mount package being able on both boats to be able to have everything right close so now, now Enzo can take videos of me. So Ted, let's talk about now, you have both a canoe paddle and kayak paddle, and yesterday you were switching back and forth. You used both. Yep, yep. The, uh, the, I've, I've become a convert for the, uh, to the, the kayak paddle. It's great because it's fast and windy conditions, or if I need to keep up with pa paddlers that are far better than me, I can use that and uh, to, uh, to have additional speed. I'm a traditional canoeist. I enjoy using a canoe paddle, um, so I like I like doing I like doing both. And uh, this boat works really well with the with the shape of the gunnels. It's fantastic. I was concerned whether or not I'd be uh, I'd be hitting the tumble home with uh, with my canoe paddle, and the 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 way it's structured with the the paddle, the blade of the paddle being below the tumble home. It just works great. It's great to get a good vertical, uh, vertical stroke with the canoe paddle also. Um, so you're, you're speaking like a whitewater paddler. Well, yeah, I do have a little bit of whitewater background. Um, and it was great to be in uh, some mild whitewater yesterday on the Oxtongue River on this boat to see how it, how it would uh, handle in the whitewater. And it was fantastic and got my first scratch on it in the first rapid, so uh, 10 minutes in. So. Perfect. That, that makes it a perfect day. That's what we always like, folks. Character marks. You've got to put some scratches on your boat to have it really feel like it's your boat. Yep. Now, that was fun, though. We, there was a bunch of small class one, smaller class two rapids. And it's tell the folks, what's it like being in a pack boat in small rapids? Because traditionally, people think of a pack boat as a flat water type vessel. When I uh, when I canoe white water, I like to be on my knees to have a have a lower center of gravity, I'm not sitting up high, you know, on a higher canoe uh, a seat. And in the pack boat, uh, being low like this, it's more like being in a kayak. Uh, so it uh, it's kind of the, the best of both worlds, having an open boat, but yet having the uh, the center of gravity and the maneuverability that's more along the lines of a kayak when you're in white water. 
it, when you first got in the boat, like we, we, you and I have talked a little bit about this, the ease of getting in and out of these pack boats. The primary stability of this boat was shocking to me because it's a narrower boat, it's faster. I was expecting it to be much, much more tippy. So the first time getting in, I was a little cautious and I was a little bit concerned about just how, uh, how tough it'd be to get in. And uh, getting into it, just stepping a foot in the flat center and just sliding right down into the, into the seat was um, just fluid, a fluid movement very secure and uh, I was quite surprised at how stable it was getting in and out of. And then when you put your second mark in Ted we went that log jam you just cruised right up on it you got in and out of the boat right away we kept going and you looked totally comfortable with that. Yeah it was easy to uh, to uh, to hop out get the boat over hop back in I'm looking forward to uh, bringing this over many beaver dams. <laughs> Now, talk about the seat comfort, because you come canoe seat background, you've had another pack boat with a different seat. What is this seat like? It's uh, about as comfortable as I can imagine. I was on, I was on it for seven hours yesterday, and uh, I uh, was incredibly comfortable. I like the fact that it's raised off the bottom a little bit. You're up just a little bit, um, and uh, it's uh, super comfortable. I was normally in a canoe. I like a canoe seat because I like to move move around quite a bit, kneeling, sitting, and this boat, I didn't feel I needed to do that. Um, it, you know, the times we took a break to get out of the water for various reasons was all I needed to stretch my legs, so very comfortable. Um, the adjustability of the, um, of, of the foot braces is incredible in itself, and so if I needed to move my legs around, I could adjust these out move them back and forth very, very easily. So I could, I could break up, you know, how I'm sitting just right here. So these, these foot braces are fantastic to be able to move around on the fly. That's nothing to it. So let's get back to the Oxtung River for a sec, Ted. We went through, at the end of it, two beautiful waterfalls. They were absolutely gorgeous. And we have some photos we can show the folks. Fantastic. That river is amazing. Isn't it cool? <laughs> it is. It is truly amazing. Now, we didn't run those waterfalls. There's some, like, one of them's an 80-foot drop. It's yeah. a pretty big one, and it's absolutely gorgeous, folks. Yeah, fantastic. Just multi-drop and just quite a, quite a cascade. And amazing. then that was towards the end of the trip, and then we got in the water at the bottom, and it's beautiful. You can see the cascading waterfall coming down, and, and you were so comfortable in the boat. I just saw that you just, you got right went through an eddy and just got right in the current and just kept cruising. Yeah, and it's kind of a classic whitewater move of getting into getting into the current, heading up in the current and uh, and and pulling into it and uh, I wanted to try it with this boat to see how it uh, had compared to some of my high rocker uh, uh, my my canoe, my whitewater canoe that I have that's got significant rocker on it and uh, this was very stable and felt very comfortable in getting out of that eddy, breaking through the eddy line and getting right into that flow. And then we got off some other short videos of you. We paddled through a bunch of the flat water section of the river that with just stupendous scenery. It was oh, gorgeous. Just fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, those those pine trees, the silver maples. Yep and then get uh, to a point where you start to get the mountains in the background. So we got foreground and background. Just a lovely day. It's a lot different than um, some of the coastal waters where you live around Chesapeake Bay to have something of the diversity here is pretty cool, isn't yep. it? Yep, it is. It truly is. Enjoy coming up here. Nice. Well, why don't we get the boat out of the water and show the folks what Tangerine Dream is really all about. Okay. Sounds good. Ted, this boat is beautiful, Tangerine Dream. Let's show the folks what Tangerine Dream is all about. Okay. So you and Enzo didn't want just a traditional one color bottom. You went to our kayak color page and yep. you picked out Sunburst. Yep. Week of long discussion and uh, looking at all the different colors and uh, thinking about the Kuwaitan that we already have and how, you know, what, what's going to, what's going to look good on top of our truck. 
Um, so this is, this is uh, the final selection that my son Enzo made, and it is fantastic. Now, what is Enzo going to say, Ted? When you arrive home and there's these beautiful scratches on the boat. I think he's going to be happy about it. And he's going to be wanting to put some scratches on himself. Nice. <laughs> awesome. So I think, uh, Ted, we should show the folks your setup that you've got for transporting this boat back home. Okay. Let's go do it. Great. This cruiser looks fantastic on the Raptor, and the cruiser and the Kiwain together, man, that's going to be nice. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing them both on top of this truck. Now, let's tell the folks, you're into paddling, it's a nice hobby to have, but you're into some other stuff as well. I am, I am. I'm a long-term motorcyclist, and I've uh, been doing quite a bit of adventure bike motorcycle riding. Um, so, I, I enjoy both sports. I like to... Uh, Tow a trailer with a motorcycle or, or several motorcycles in it with canoes on the top because I can do uh, several different sports in one trip. Now, while you were up here, you did something cool the first day. Tell the folks what you did. I did. I uh, picked out a route on my GPS and did a loop all the way around the Algonquin Park and uh, ended up in South River. Got a tour of the, uh, of the factory in South River. Saw Tangerine Dream for the first time there. And uh, so it was a great day um, of, uh, of riding before a great day of paddling on the Oxtong River. So let's show the folks. I've, I was really into this guy. Love nice canoes and kayaks and pack boats. This is really cool. This is a super cool motorcycle. Let's show them what you got. Sure. It's a, it's a Ducati Desert X, which is Ducati's uh, first uh, adventure motorcycle. I've got it outfitted uh, for, I could spend a couple days on this motorcycle. I did not, uh, when I came up here, didn't know exactly what the plan was. So I was ready to uh, go adventure motorcycle riding for a couple days or paddling for a couple days. I can pull the dry bags out of that, uh, out of that setup and uh, pop them in a canoe. And I can either ride or I can paddle. Or take them into a hotel room or set up yep. a campsite, whatever you want. Exactly, exactly. Nice. Well, Ted, this has been awesome. I'm so glad we met you. And how about four thumbs up to Tangerine Dream and a Ducati? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>